Hey, what's up, guys and ladies? So today we have a nice little different thing. I'm doing a little quick beer review online of Polliner Hefeweizen. Now, it is a nice natural wheat beer. I haven't had it in a while, but I do enjoy myself a nice wheat beer. So I said, hey, the hell with it. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's do it together so we can enjoy it. So now this beer here is a one pint, nine fluid ounces ale, okay? 5.5% alcohol by volume. The secrets behind Polliner, excellent taste and unwavering quality are the lo lo locally sourced ingredients. Craftsmanship has been passed down since 1634. So this beer, has survived longer than we have, has been through everywhere, and it's still, to this day, here for us to taste. So it actually, I'm on the website right now, and it talks about for maximum refreshment and taste to serve at 44.6 degrees. I, I typically like to serve my beers in a at a higher temp. The reason is especially, well, not all beers, okay? I'm not saying go out there and get expect to get yourself a an adjunct lager and pour it at 50 degrees and you're gonna be like oh this thing is great if you pour an adjunct lager probably at that time you're probably gonna be thinking what mistake did I do because you're probably not going to like it and all the different obviously the adjuncts or the different flavors are gonna be coming out and probably not going to be too, too good so but for beers like wheat beers, I found that if you do pour them at higher temperatures, you get those wonderful flavors from the yeast they used, the ingredients, especially Bavarian style. You get those nice esters, fennels, the spices. I think it smells amazing. It smells like ah, sweet, almost pastry-like. You get the spices from the different, the yeast that was used, the cultivated yeast, because that's where it comes from. The main thing about, um, think about beer. You know, you get your grain, you get your water, good water, right? Um, you get your hops to balance out the sweetness of the grain. But if you don't have a good yeast, your beer... I mean, the yeast does everything. We just put the ingredients together, and then you pitch that yeast, and then it creates something beautiful just like this. So this wheat beer here has like an orange, very hazy appearance. It's not opaque. Light passes through, but I cannot see through. So, I mean, you can call it opaque, but it is such a – look at the head on that. That is a full head. It almost looks like meringue. It's wild. I'm pouring all this bad boy in here. Once again, it is a 5.5% alcohol by volume since 1634. Wow. Now, we go back to this website. It talks about the unit sizes. So it comes in multiple sizes. Comes with the bottle, 16.9 is what I have. Comes 11.2. It also comes in a 12 pack and 24 pack, and a six pack. Okay. Ingredients are different. They use different uh, type of hop varieties. They use Hercules and Taurus. And they also use for malts, they use light wheat malt dark wheat malt, which you're probably getting some of that color from the dark wheat malt, Pilsner malt, and Munich malt, okay? So it has a nice balance of malts to achieve that color, and also the hops itself, just noble enough to, to, um, to just accompany the rest of the beer without taking it over, right? So let's taste this. Cheers.
It's very effervescent right up the front. You get a lot of carbonation, which is traditional for a type of, I don't want to say a lot. It's not like, oh my God, I, I don't know what I'm tasting, but it's enough to notice that you definitely going to have some carbonation. The aromas are like sweet spices, sugar, malt, like a, like a, like a wheat loaf of warm bread. With uh, maybe a banana spice, some, maybe some some uh, dried fruits, some apricot. The mouthfeel is slightly powdery. Think of like a, a traditional wheat beer, which has that powdery consistency, but it's not slick or anything. Uh, it, it's pretty dry at the back end, except you do taste the wheat that kind of let kind of lingers at the end. Starts off nice and sweet. Middle, you start getting some of the spices and some of the noble hops that they use. It ends spicy, phenolic esters, banana, some red apples, some apricots, um, some spices, almost even some kind of like, uh, it, which they don't use nutmeg or they don't use cinnamon. I don't believe so, but you get some kind of that type of quality that you would find from you know, just a typical spices, but that's what you get from a Bavarian wheat beer. Oh, it's an awesome beer. Like I said, I'm drinking it probably about 50 degrees or so, and I really have nothing wrong to say about it. It's, it's a well over all around beer. Um, it, it didn't cost too much. This bottle here was about a little two about $2 and 50 cents or so at my local BevMo, <clears throat> which is pretty damn good for a, uh, a pint of beer. So I recommend you go look for it, find it, taste it, experience it. You always want to have yourself a nice, good wheat beer that you can always come down to all the time. Um, I'm also going to take this chance to for you guys, whoever is looking at my channel, whoever does watch my channel, uh, I am going to be bringing out a Modern Times brewery exploration series, episodes, whatever. But I picked up a bunch of Modern Time beers. I'm going to be doing a uh, brew reveal of Modern Times, not soon. And then I'm going to spend whatever it takes, and go through every single beer of modern times, all right? So for those of you that want to learn about modern times or are interested in their beers, stay tuned, watch my channel, because I will have them. Thank you for subscribing and liking. For those of you that do watch me and watch my beer reviews, I'll thank you. I also have another channel. Um, if you're interested, let me know. Check out my Facebook, The Brew Dude. Check out my Instagram, The Brew Dude. Uh, check out my, uh, what else do I have? Mm, some other stuff check out the brew dude just google it the brew dude and you'll find a different things thank you for watching and with that said guys the brew dude is out